So today's name is Jehovah El Roy. El Roy. Jehovah El Roy. Jehovah means the Lord. El means God. And Roy, Roy actually means shepherd. But when you put it all together, it means the Lord, our God, who sees me. And you can substitute you for me. So it's really wonderful that God sees each one of us. He sees me. He sees you. And, and so that word, I think, is, is important to understand. First, to understand that what he's saying is, I am the Lord your God who is your shepherd. And we're going to talk about what it means to be a shepherd and what that relationship between shepherd and sheep, in this case, shep the sheep, uh, what that really looks like. So many of you probably know a passage also from, from Psalms, Psalm 23, that starts with, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. Right, got it. So the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my Roy, Roy being shepherd. And then what does it say after that? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. Which means that, going back to Jehovah Jireh, God who provides, there's nothing that I need that God can't provide. So if I need it, it's not the same as wanting it, but if I need it, I can trust God to provide it. So this, this is kind of building on itself. So Jehovah El Roy, Jehovah the Shepherd, is also the same God who provides. But in this case, as a shepherd, he's going to take care of what you need or want. So the Lord, um, God is, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What then happens? What's the next line? Exactly. Okay, and so why would green pastures, no, this is great, you've really got this. So why would green pastures be important for sheep? And you know that because you've got sheep, right? No, we do not. Yeah, goats. Yes, okay. And cows. And cows and dogs. And lots of other animals. But the sheep need the grass for a couple of reasons. They do need it for food, but the verse says that he makes them lie down in green pastures. And maybe they're eating while they're lying down, but he's also he's encouraging them to rest, but also to be in a place that he can, can watch and, and uh, just take care of them. What's the next line? Then do you know, or does somebody else know? So he makes, makes me lie down in green pastures and... Put her on the spot. <laughs> makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters or still waters. So God is, is interested in taking care of what you need. He's interested in taking care of what you need to eat or where you need to be. And he also provides some food, shelter, water, all those things. He takes care of. So if God is the shepherd, who are we? We're the sheep. Shep the sheep is not the only sheep in the room. We're all sheep. So if you can imagine that we're a flock this morning, each of you, use your imagination just for a little bit, and, and we're going to pretend like we're each all sheep. And for those of us who are farmers in the audience, just pretend like you've got sheep, and, and you are a sheep this morning. And so you're going to be interested in what your shepherd does and how your shepherd takes care of you. Okay, so that, that passage from Psalm 23 is really important. But I want you to hear this especially of what a, a shepherd does. So a shepherd takes care of the, of the flock, all of the flock, everybody in the flock, all of you as sheep, you're interested in food, water, shelter, all those things, and protection, safety, all of those things are going to be important. Does a shepherd leave the flock at night and go back to his house in the city and then come back and gather, get back together? Where's, where's the shepherd when it gets dark? What does the shepherd do? Stay in the pasture with the sheep. Do you sleep in the pasture with your goats? No. no. But, but yeah, you're right. The shepherd has taken his flock up into the green pastures or up by the still waters, and he's staying here. So, 
So you guys are the sheep, and just pretend like I'm the shepherd. I'm not going to want to leave you because part of my job is to make sure that you're okay, especially at night. Because what can happen at night? Wolves. Wolves or coyotes or, in your case, bobcats or whatever else. Thieves. Because you got rid of the bobcats, yeah, I know. So, yeah, we won't go into that. But, um, but he stays with, he's always, always with the sheep. Not just during the day, or not just during part of the day. This is really important. A good shepherd is going to be with the sheep at all times. So, we're going to read now from Matthew chapter 18. Shut the sheep. That was your cue. There you go. So, realize we're still here as a flock. We're still here as a flock. But something's changed. Something just happened. We've got a big flock still, and I don't know how many of us there are, but say 12 of us here right now, but now we're missing one. Okay, now as a shepherd, I can say, well, I still have my 12, and I know we're missing one, but I'm going to take care of the 12. Is that what the shepherd does? No. What, what would a good shepherd do if he knew that he lost one? What would he do? Exactly, yes, because he's interested not just in the whole flock, but he's interested, that, remember, Jehovah El Roy, El Roy, Jehovah El Roy means what? The Lord our God who sees me. So he sees each and every one of you, not just the group. He sees the group, and he's aware of the group, but he sees the individual and that's really important. So there's never a time that we're going to not be seen or understood by God. So here's the story. It kind of goes along with what you were just saying. This is Matthew chapter 18 and verse 12. The shepherd had a hundred sheep. A hundred. It's a lot. A hundred sheep. And one of them, whose name was Shep the Sheep, went missing. He went astray. Does he not leave the other 99 on the mountain and go in search of the one that went astray? Yes, he did. Because he loves that individual, that one person, so very much he's willing to leave the 99 and go find the one. And he finds it. And truly I say to you, he rejoices over it so much more than over the 99 that never went astray. So my job as a shepherd now is going to go to find. And I don't know exactly where he went. Could be somewhere on the other side of the mountains. Could be somewhere down by the valley. Could be in the forest. I don't know. But I have the sense that maybe... There he is. <laughs> there he is. Shep the sheep. I found him and I am so incredibly happy. I am so joyful that, Shep, I found you again. So, Shep, you come and do it. Yeah, we can all rejoice. So this is really cool. We've got the whole flock back together again. In this case, we've got now 13. But in the Bible story, it was 100, and they lost one. But Jesus, our good shepherd, God, our shepherd, cares enough that he would go search for that one. Now, that's important to understand because... There will be times in your life, and I've had times in my life, when I felt like I'm really alone. And that no one understands exactly what it is that I'm struggling with. It may be a problem at home, it may be a problem with school, it may be a problem with friends, it may be a problem that I have with my parents. It may be a problem that's just a problem and I'm really concerned about it. And I don't think there's anybody else who really understands it as well as I do. Nobody else can feel it the way I feel it. But this passage, this name, Jehovah El Roy, reminds us that God not only sees, he doesn't know where Shep the sheep was, he knows where he is, but he knows what Shep the sheep was probably feeling as he was by himself and alone, probably scared, realized that he had gotten separated from the rest of the flock, and my guess was back in the dark, and Shep was really hiding back there. I had to look way back in there to find him, that it could have been a scary place. 
And it's important to understand that God not only sees where you are, but he understands what you were feeling when you were there. And that's what's important about this name, Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees me. Not just physically sees me, but he understands me. He knows me. He cares about me. And so this is a really wonderful name to take with us today as we go out. And you can be absolutely sure that Jehovah El Roy is with you at all times, just like any good shepherd would be. Roy meaning sh shepherd. He is your shepherd. He is your shepherd for the rest of your life. There's nowhere. Is there anywhere that you could go as a sheep that Jehovah or Roy wouldn't know where you went? No. No, he would know everywhere that you went. No matter how far you might go or how far you might have strayed away, God knows. Is there anything that you could do that would separate you from God in such a way that you'd never be able to be brought, brought back into the, the flock again? Is there anything? No. So you need to remember that too. There's nowhere you can go, there's nothing you can do that would ever take you away from your shepherd who loves you and cares for you so, so deeply. Is there anything that he doesn't know about you? What about your deepest, darkest secret that you've kept to yourself? You haven't told anybody. Does Jehovah El Roy know that secret also? He does. And I think that's really under important to understand, too. Sometimes we feel like we're so isolated that we're the only one who knows what we're going through, and nobody else knows. And so if nobody else knows, nobody else cares. But in this case, Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees me, knows and understands and cares beyond just caring. It's a love that is an infinite love. It is an eternal love. It goes with us forever and ever. So there's no place you can hide. There's nothing that can happen. There's nothing that you can feel that would ever separate you in such a way that God wouldn't know or understand. So God not only sees, but he understands, he cares, and he loves. And there is nothing that would ever separate you from that truth. So remember that. Anytime you might feel isolated, alone, or really sad, or something has upset your world, maybe just for yourself, or maybe for your family, or maybe at school, no matter what it is, you are not alone. That you have a shepherd who loves you and cares for you more than you may ever know, but he is there to care for you at all times. And I hope that makes you feel more comfortable and peaceful as you go forward. And there are going to be a lot of things in the future that will, will challenge your peace and your comfort and maybe even take your joy for a while, but God is there to restore that in the most wonderful way. So, Jehovah El Roy. The Lord our God who sees me, who sees you, who sees all of us, but if, if we wander off, he's going to always come and find you and bring you back. So with that in mind, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who sees not just all of us as a group, but Lord, you see us each individually. You know us by name. You care for us. You, you lead us into green pastures so that we can be fed and cared for. You take us beside still water so that we can rest and relax and um, enjoy the cool waters. We thank you that when we do wander or go astray, you know exactly where we are and you know even the secrets of our own hearts, and you love us enough to bring us back each and every time. Father, we thank you for who you are as our great shepherd, Jehovah El Roy, in our lives. We just want to worship you and thank you each and every day for that truth of who you are. And so today, Lord, we thank you and all God's children and all God's sheep 
said, Amen. Amen. Amen.